crab hole. That's the definition of mud crab. Yep! Yep! Ah, oh, have a go oh. with that! Tuna, tuna, tuna. Look at the meat just falling off the bone. For the next 72 hours, I'm in a part of this country that I've never been to before in my life. My brother Jack and his Mrs. Eva, better known as Miss Mud Crab, have moved to the other side of Australia. I've always wanted to go and check out this part of the world, the Wild West. For the catches, I've only got three days to do it. So we've packed up Jack's truck. Eva's got her grandmother's 50-year-old tinny. I've flown in with minimal provisions, but I've got a spear gun, fishing rods, a little bit of fishing gear, filming gear. We're heading north, further remote. Strap yourselves in, let's get back to basics. Right, happy at the mouth of this gutter, mate? Yeah, that's perfect. Big crab soon. So we've come pretty far up this mangrove system and we're looking for like little inlets and tributaries that cut up right in here. So we're gonna run a few of these pots a little bit further up there as the tide's rushing in. It's deeper than the crab hook. So, oh, that's great. Oh, no. croc, croc. Oh, that's a big croc. We're making a bit too much noise. We're probably close to a three meter croc just come off this bank sunning itself in the cool afternoon sun and it's probably sitting right under the boat now. Here in this location we're using dilly pots which basically you work them really hard and only leave them in for 30 minutes so I've got a cod head smack bang in the middle really fresh crabs are going to walk up here have a feed and then as we pull and check the pot it'll hopefully trap them in this mesh net here and then we can get a feed of crabs Let's see how we go. It's just been after 30 minutes and we're coming up to check these dilly pots now. Eva's got the gaff, Jack's on the wheel, I'm on vibe and slash crab patrol. You've done this before, mate. I know. Woo! <laughs> oh, first pot, big crab. Oh! Yes! 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 2.0! We're yes, in crab tonight! Success rate! All right, the verdict is that we've left them in for a bit too long. Like we need to check them every 20 minutes because a lot of the bait is completely gone. And we've come up as far as we can. Okay, yeah, we're stuck. <laughs> we're stuck. Oh, <laughs> the motor's in the mud, let's get this. <laughs> and this is what crabbing in the Kimberley's all about. Into the crab hole. Got a beautiful mud crab. That is such a big crab. Look at its nippers. A lot of meat in that. Uh, in here. We also got in that one a little gold spot cod, but you're going back to live another day, mate. Out of 10, how much do you love catching mud crabs? Oh, one million. One million. Yeah, oh! I've never caught crabs like these. You get the really big bluey purple ones on the east coast and here in the west coast country, like brown and electric orange. They're, they don't grow as big apparently, but they're heavy and hopefully tasty. Supposedly it's legal in this state to keep female crabs, but it doesn't really feel right to me. So we're gonna let this one go because we've got plenty of big male bucks. You can tell it's a female by this fan tail under the carapace. And also the, the nippers are generally significantly smaller than those big males. So I'm gonna let this little girl go so she can go have a lot of mud crab sex, make a heap more. That's the biggest one yet. That's such a big crab. Oh, oh my God. We've done two rotations. We just pulled all the pots back in because we're gonna lose light pretty soon. Last pot, big crab, mission success. about to lose light now but we need to get this boat out of the water because there's a hole and it's like slowly sinking so we're gonna get the boat out tend to that set a camp up and i'll see you bright and early in the morning to go and explore more of this absolute paradise all right we got up super early this morning before the sun come up to watch it rise over these sand dunes. There's this like hectares and hectares of these rolling pearly white sand dunes right on the edge of the beach, surrounded by sort of mangroves where all the crabs and the crocs would be. Then up here on top, it's just, it's honestly like a desert. <laughs> Very beautiful.
Let's go out there. Black spot tusk fish or blue bone, the perfect size. It's a great fish, mate. There you go. It's about three hours away from where Jack and Eva live, so he's pretty keen to get some fish, be able to freeze a little bit to take home for the next few weeks to eat for lunch and dinners. For reference, Jack's been in the water for literally under a minute. And Eva's got one too. <laughs> show us, show us what you got, mate. Beautiful tusky. Nice, well done. Tasty. Oh, all right, we're all good to go. but two black spot tusk fish, or as they call them, blue bone, and one mangrove jack. Nice bro. How'd you go miss mud crab? I was just looking around, you know? <laughs> looking for the mud crabs? <laughs> looking for the crabs. It was pretty encouraging to see how much life is just up here in the shallows, like right around the rock, somewhat of a, a nursery, a lot of small fish, and then as soon as you trail off the edge, it's full of bait, a lot of jacks, rabbit fish, tuskies, um, stripies, yeah, big bull ray, a couple of big barbs on the back of it, but I think we're in the water for what, half an hour? Five fish? <laughs> That's plenty good feed. And then we're gonna go have a bit more of explore along this coast. Wow. Yeah, oh, beautiful. It's a great size jack, eh? Use the frame to catch crabs later. Yo! Cello. We're trying to move up the mangrove system, but it's low tide. We found one little channel we can cross the sandbar. We're going to keep moving up, so fingers crossed we don't get stuck. All right, so we've worked our way deep up into this mangrove system, hitting sandbars all over the place, and the tide is sort of too low for us to be able to get as far into it as we wanted. So we pulled up here on this mud bank, anchored the boat up. We're gonna take a walk up in there with these crab hooks, which not everywhere in Australia, you're legally allowed to hook mud crabs, but here in this state, it's the go-to method. So enter the mangroves, let's do it. Pretty amazing to think that the tides here are that big that on a higher tide, the water would be over my head where I'm walking. So far, no crabs, but it looks pretty damn good. We're gonna keep pressing forward. To me. Oh, it's a big crab. Is it missing a nipper? I think so. Oh, it's a big crab. It's a greenie. <gasps> and that's what crabbing's all about. <laughs> we're, um, we're looking for big pieces of structure, holes, and also drains where it's a bit wet like this. With a bit of structure, there's some old rotten mangrove here. And there's a crab just on the other side of that there. You want the hook? Yeah. That's the definition of mud crab. I think there's more mud than crab at this point in time, but we'll wash it off and get a better look. That was deep. That there's a, a brown mud crab. They're a hell of a lot more feistier I've seen to pick up. And apparently their claws sort of completely overlap. So if they do bite you, it's a hell of a lot more painful than that of a a green one, but we got both, so we'll get a close look at them together. That's what we came here for. Oh, 
Jesus. It's a healthy system, but it's pretty tough going to get a feed of mud crabs. Those dilly pots are a fair bit more leisurely. <clears throat> so apparently mud crabs are selling for $90 a kilo live. Fresh mud crabs here in Australia. Can someone please fact check that for me in the comments? Let me know in Australia, how much is it for a live mud crab? Because $90 is like three times as much as what it was a couple of years ago. I understand everything's gone up, but pretty expensive. And makes this walking through the knee deep mud with the sand flies and the march flies and the sharp timber spiking into the bottom of your feet through the thick mud, makes it all worth it because I love mud crabs. And I love this, I love it. <gasps> Almost out, we'll have a look. We'll check up on the boat, Let's see if there's any along the bank. So this is a beautiful green mud crab. Nice big nipper there, it's gonna go down a tree. That's your dinner? That's dinner. Although the brown mud crabs are smaller, they're more aggressive and in an ecosystem where greens and browns are together, the browns will dominate and can actually kill the greens a lot easier. So although they're a smaller crab, you really wanna watch out for these. Oh, snap. Not ideal, but we've run aground on a sandy mud flat in the middle of this river system that we're trying to work up and get a couple of crabs. And there's most likely a lot of crocs starting to get deeper here, mate. Okay. The sort of amazing thing about crocs is that when they stalk and when they hunt, the patterns on their back, like all the different nodes on their back, on the skin, perfectly separate the water so that they can create zero ripples along the water so they can be stalking up towards you and they don't even break the surface you don't even know they're coming so fortunately we're back in the boat it's all good yep 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 i forgot that crab ginormous green crab that's the biggest we've got yet nice that is a serious crab. It's so cool to be in an ecosystem where you get the brown and these giant green ones. We've got a good feed of crabs now. We'll head back to camp. All right, Captain, you're up for a beer, mate. Oh. Woo. Eva, one for Miss Mud Crab. Yes, please. Like it's just been hot all day and this thing's just still full of ice. It's <laughs> awesome. That's so good. Icy cold beers. Just gonna go up and get a fire going, cook up some of these crabs for lunch. So we've kept them in this hessian sack and they stay alive for quite a long time. We just keep it in the shade and dip it in the salt water every now and then. But put some of the brown ones and the green ones in here. I'll just put them to sleep. All right, we've worked up a bit of a hunger. Mud crabs on the menu, got the coal base going. I'm just gonna spread it out, get some nice even heat and throw a few of the crabs. Top of the shell down, I'll leave them there for eight to 10 minutes. I'm just throwing one each on for us. The quickest way to humanely kill crabs as well is just putting a knife or a screwdriver or a blade straight down the middle. It puts them to sleep instantly. We're gonna leave these for 10 or 15 minutes or so, have a feed. These look so good. Mud crabs are done. And Jack and Eva are still not here. I don't know where they are. Could be showing each other a couple of wrestling moves in the mangroves, but either way, they better get here soon because I'm hungry and these are gonna taste damn good. We've got a couple of fish on here as well. The tusky is completely submerged in the coals. And then I've got the mangrove jack sort of partially. But there's still a fair bit of heat in here, so they should cook pretty quick. All right, there we go. The mangrove lollipop. Cooking on the fire, giving it that smoky flavor. It's so, so tasty. Haven't put anything on that. No lime, no salt, no pepper, no zhuzh. Just straight up nature. All right, they've emerged. They've emerged out of the mangroves. Oh, yum. That's so good. Oh, nothing better. Mud crabs, how good. Doesn't get better than that, straight on the coal. One of my favorite things, mud crab. Good as, looks good. Well done, cowgirl. Woo, yeah. that's what cooking fish in the Kimberley's all about. Yeah, looking nice and appetizing there. <laughs> 
This has been pretty much buried in coals for the last 15, 20 minutes. Because Tusky and Jacks have got decent scales, it lends itself well to being pretty much buried. That's just perfectly cooked white flesh. Have a look at this. Look at the meat just falling off the bone. That is so, so tender. Bone, flesh, that's number one. All right, good morning, we're back out on the boat. It's our final full day here, so we're gonna explore more of some bays, coastline, reefs, and mangrove systems that we haven't yet seen, which is very easy to say because you could literally spend a lifetime here and you'd scratch the surface, but Tinny's back in the water, it's high tide, the wind's low, the viz is clear. It's our final day, let's do it. For the majority of the year here, you get 10 to 12 meter tides, which is massive and stirs up a lot of the water. So it's pretty hard to dive. You don't have the visibility, but at the moment it's neap tides. There's still three or four meters movement. The clarity of the water is good. And we've got a pretty good shot at jumping in the water, getting some decent visibility to try and get a few fish on the spear. So we've come across to this bay, white sandy beaches, and there's like red sort of rocky headlands that come out into the ocean. And we're hoping that we might have a good shot at being able to get a fish on the spear. So we'll jump in, check it out. white-bellied sea eagle. They mate for life, got a huge wingspan. They're a seriously impressive bird. Wow. We're up a mangrove system on the run out tide and I'm gonna show you right in amongst the action in real time how we're live baiting to catch salmon. So what we've done is we found a pressure edge where there's current wrapping around a corner creating an eddy and also where the dirty water is meeting the clean water. And we can see that there's a lot of bait there. Like we don't have any sounding equipment on the boat. We're just purely going off visuals. We found this corner behind me here, anchored the tinny up on this edge and we're about 10 meters away from where this bait's working. And you can see salmon and queenfish working through it. That's the current strategy for hooking. Got 50 pound leader, got the bait and I put the hook through the eye and then down the back so that as you're pulling it in, hopefully swims with the direction you're pulling it. Yeah. Nice. Nice salmon! Hey. This one's a little bit small, so I'm gonna let it go to live and fight another day. Hey, see you later, mate. Oh. Awesome, mate. Josh, that's a big one. Yep. Nice, my baits were too big. I was putting on a whole one and they kept hitting the tail. Oh, yep, another salmon. And that's what fishing in the Kimberley is all about. <laughs> yep! Yep! Yeah. Woo! Oh, come on. oh, the bus stop! <laughs> oh, it dropped it! No! Oh, back on! Back yes. on! Push! It's hard to see what it is, but it looks like a little tuna. Or not so little tuna. What type oh, is it? It's a long tail. Oh, get oh. the gaff, get the gaff. 
Oh, have a go at that! Good spot, oh, man. Wow. <laughs> How's that? We're literally a mile off the beach and there was bait jumping. First cast with a little metal slug. And we've got this long tail tuna or, or northern bluefin. We don't have any ice. We've got a freezer in the back of Jack's troopy back at camp. So we're going to rush back now and get this cold um, so we can respect the meat as much as possible because these are amazing sashimi. Amazing to cook. Just an all round beautiful fish. We're going to make the absolute most of that. Oh, I'm so stoked, guys. <laughs> Fortunately, it's only about 15 minutes back to camp, so I'm gonna go run it up, put it in the back of the freezer. See you soon. Tuna, tuna, tuna. I love tuna. <sighs> These little soldier crabs. There's soldier crabs all over the beach. Tide's rapidly dropping. Let's get back out there. So much more to check out. All right, who wants a beer or a coconut? Oh, beer. Yeah? Beers, beers, beers. Cold beer for you. Thank you. There's just still heaps of ice in here. It's so <laughs> great. Here, mate. Here, skipper. And cold gods. Nut. New addition to the, the traveling kit. It holds six liters of water in this bag at the back here, which is unbelievable because hydration is the key to happiness. One of the most important things out here. And then it's got this like big cooler box that fits like a carton or so of cans, like 24 cans. And if you don't want to have drinks in it, you can put all your, I put my filming gear in it sometimes because it's completely waterproof. But today it's got cold coconuts and beers. Mm, cold coconut is so good. How's the beer? Mm. Happy? Happy. <laughs> Oh, so I far, this is one of the best days ever. Best days 100%, that ever. was epic. Doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Can't wipe the smile off my face, eh? Hey? Bomb dive, yeah. the stealth approach. Straight on to the... <laughs> Just splash. Early. ourselves a round of high fives. Woo! Oh, I love round of, round of high fives. High fives, Woo! bum taps, all around. Are you a fan of a bum tap? Yeah, bum taps. Bum taps, bum taps, bum taps. Safe old bum taps. Bum taps. Woo! Alrighty. Let's wrap it up. It'll be good to have a shower, first shower in a few days. And maybe Jack could brush his teeth as well. Nah, probably not. Eh? <laughs> I'm trying something new out. <laughs> His teeth are grow <laughs> growing seaweed. All right, we're gonna pack the camp up, pack the boat up, get back to, to Jack and Eva's place, process up some fish and cook up a well-earned feed. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. Why do we make these videos? We want more people to get out there. We feel amazing when we come back from these trips and if you're able to go out there yourself if not watch learn from them and, and hopefully you get some joy out of it get some value learn some tricks and if you want to learn more about back to basics we got the website there we're on all the socials we'll see you next week